Yo guys, this is Adrian Yanez telling you to use those handles. Hit, click, like, and subscribe. Fuck yeah, dudes. If y'all don't do it, man, fucking catch the hands, bro. Hello. You're welcome to the Fight Week show, and I'm here with my boy, Mark. Erwin is here in the building. Thank you for joining us, Mark. It's a great honor to have you on the show. How are you doing, my bro? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on. Oh, man. I mean, it's 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 been so good seeing your work i've been I've, I've been looking at your work been seeing what you've been doing on the uh on the efc scene and it's been absolutely crazy you, you've been on it you've been on it here i mean your last fight was in uh july to uh 2020 i mean 2022 july just gone uh and you, you're on fire right now bro on the free uh, you got you got free fights as a pro free finishes what gives you the drive to finish all these fights the way you keep finishing these fights? I just feel like there's always an opportunity to finish the fight. I don't I don't feel like like I'd ever want to go to the judges. I don't know why anyone would ever try and fight three rounds or five rounds and try and go to the judges because they're never really guaranteed they could, they could rob you, they could give it the other way. I'd just rather put, put the kind of verdict in my own hands and get the fight finished. And I feel like I have the capability and, and the vision to see where I can finish the fight and, and always push for the finish. I think it's just that killer instinct and that, that kind of venom I've got in me. It's like I'm always trying to, it's going to sound bad, but I'm trying to kill the person. I'm trying to get them out of there. Like, you're not getting paid by the hour as well, you know what I mean? So why be in there any longer than you need to be? I'm in there trying to finish guys and, and take care of them as fast as I can. That's that's true. That's That's, I mean... You're you're a finisher, and you 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 set every time you set out, you set out to get the job done. Tell us about your martial arts background and what led you to you know finishing fights early the way you know the way you the way you get them done. So I started off I first started with MMA and uh, I mind I was doing MMA training and I was watching these guys spar. The first time I'd ever seen sparring, it was a Muay Thai class. The guys were sparring. And I remember asking the coach at the time, I goes, what are they doing? How, I, want, I want to do that. Like, I want, I want to spar. And he goes, oh, you need to do Muay Thai to spar. So then I just packed an MMA right away and started doing Muay Thai. And then, I, obviously, just so I could spar, because I had that desire, that hunger, I wanted to fight right away. Yeah. So I started doing Muay Thai, trained Muay Thai for a good couple of years. I'd, I'd fought Muay Thai multiple times. And then, by that time, I had a good, a good, really good striking base. And then I eventually came back over to MMA with that good Muay Thai striking base and that killer instinct and, and obviously the good hands and, and kicks and so, solid stand-up, I, I took it to MMA and I've just been able to finish guys using using good strikes, but obviously now I've added uh, good wrestling, jiu-jitsu, loads. I've just always had that knack for being able to take guys out and just just having the hunger, I feel like, the hunger and the, and the desire, that tenacity. Like I've always had that since I was a kid, that competitive drive to win and finish and, and win at all costs, like win at any means necessary, like I'm always trying to win, do you know what I mean? So, and the best way to win is to get the finish. So I've kind of always had that in me. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love that work, that work ethic in you, the the, the fighter spirit, the warrior spirit, and, and trying to get that job done at all costs. And, you know, we can't just paint everything rosy because it's never like that in the life mm -hmm. of a fighter. Well, we, we know this, it's never like that. And earlier on in your in your career, it took a couple couple losses, um, one by decision and one by by armbar. Which one was the hardest for you to to do, <coughs> and and why? So I had three losses, all of them back to back. So the first two the first two were decision, and the last one was armbar. They were all hard. I'd probably say the first one was the hardest. It was the first time I'd ever lost. Right. I, I started there in May, I knocked two guys out, I went 2-0, and, oh, and then I thought, I, thought, I thought somebody who was experienced, and just, I just knew the game, and I was just still so raw, and the guy just took me down, and by that time I'd never really seen wrestling, I hadn't seen wrestling, so this guy took me down, and I was like, fuck, what the fuck did I do, how did I get back up, I hadn't really practiced that, I hadn't drilled that, it wasn't in me subconsciously, so I ended up losing that fight, and then it happened again, I, did, I didn't really learn from my mistakes, I was still young, still raw, I didn't really go back to the drawing board and realize where I lost. I lost that again, and by that time, I just I was starting to lose love for the sport a bit. I was still training, but 
and taking fights, but I just didn't love it the way that I, that I first started off loving it. Do you know what I mean? And that I was partying and doing other stuff, but it wasn't my main objective. It wasn't like my main desire or goal or something. So I wasn't taking it too serious. And then obviously I got armbarred, and to get finished, to be finished, never never mind lose to be finished. And I was I was winning that fight. Even though I was hardly training, I was hardly taking it serious, I was winning the fight, I got armbarred, and I, and I deserved to lose because of the way I was taking the fight and the way I was looking at my career and, and the game. So obviously I got armbarred, I lost that fight, I went away and I was like, this is embarrassing. This is fucking embarrassing. You can't be doing this. You know I mean, like, you're better than that. You've got more to give. Mm. But you but you need to, it, it starts and it ends with you and I need to, do, to commit myself to the game. I went away on holiday, my friends, I came back and I was like, I'm giving everything I've got to this sport and I'm never going to lose again. And look where we are now, you know what I mean? I'm free and I was a pro fighter in the AFC. I've not lost since. I, I doubt I'll ever lose since because I felt they losses and they hurt, they hurt to the core, man. They were horrible, man. That was, like I said, embarrassing, especially to be armbarred and be finished. I was like, oh, how is anybody finishing me? That like, I would rather go out in my shield, you know what I mean? Then, then tap and I fuck I, I tapped at the time to an armbar on it. It'll help me for a while, but you need to go over it. Do you know what I mean? You need you need to go over it, and then I feel like I have. I'm doing well now. Obviously, I'm on this unbeaten streak, and I'll continue to be on the streak. But these three losses were vital in my career, a massive turning point in my career for me to really acknowledge myself, look myself in the mirror, but like take accountability here. That it starts and it ends with you, and you need to just commit. And if you're not going to commit, then go and do something else. Because if you want, you can take it all the way, but you need to really want to. You need to you need to want it enough. Yeah, I mean, look, you 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 answered two questions in one because I was going to ask you how <laughs> how it how it would have shaped you. You know, how, how it shaped you um, as a professional going into your professional career, and you you hit the nail on the head because if if this is if you if you're taking those type of losses and feeling embarrassed the way you have, then. It's either go hard or go home. You, mm-hmm. you've, got, you've got to have that mind to reset, to reset yourself. Um, what sets higher level martial arts gym where, where you where you you know where you train out of, uh, apart from all the other gyms in your opinion, um, your your gym? What sets them apart? What sets it apart? Definitely the culture, the culture that my head coach James Hill has cultivated. He, let's take the culture culture in the gym but as where like James has cultivated this type of culture but it's work hard like and, and there's no one really sitting down and taking the piss like you, you have a laugh and obviously it's it's a nice environment but everyone's there to work hard but work hard and, and we keep each other accountable like if you say you want to be a world champion or you say you want to win your fight or if you have it even if you have a fight mm. ev- everyone's on you like if you have a fight and you're not in People are going to hold you accountable. They're going to message you, but like, where are you at? What are you doing? If if you have a fight and you're slacking, sitting down, people are going to pick you up and be like, what are you doing? Like, there's a culture in there where the work ethic kind of stands above anything else, and everyone kind of gets after it and pushes each other and holds each other accountable. And that's what I really love about the gym, as well as James being a, a pioneer of MMA and such a great head coach. He's a, he's such a student of the game as well, as well as being a master. He's a student of the game. He's always learning. He's sending us fights and studying fights. He's, he watches nearly every UFC, breaks it down, shows us new moves. He's, he's it's constantly, constantly showing us new moves and, and constantly looking for areas to develop. As martial artists, he's always pushing us to to get better and to evolve. And obviously, that's his team and that, that's his job. And he's he's one of the best. I feel like in the, he's, in the UK, he's he, he's uh, he's recognised as one of the best. But I feel like in the next couple of years, he'll be in the world. People start to kind of recognise him and give him the credit he deserves because, yeah, like I'm saying, he's been in this game for a long, long time, and I feel like he's always been this way. James is like he's a real student of the game. Like he loves like the old school boxing, the boxing fights. Like you've got like a, your Hagler, your your Hearns, your your even go back to like Sugary Robinson. Like he knows all his stuff on that, and then he, he'll know like your your old pride fighters and stuff. He, he knows a lot of. If it, Anything about the fight game, James he really knows his stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's a student of the game. And I have a coach like that who's always pushing you and always kind of got your best interest at heart, and it's great to have. So definitely, I, I would say what sets us apart as a team is the culture that James has cultivated and James himself. So they two are massive factors. That is such a brilliant, brilliant um, answer because when you look at, you know, all these 
young and up and coming fighters that you know they they they're looking for a new gym to 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 join you know mm -hmm. to try and follow in in your footsteps and uh, try and do what you do uh you know, th these are some of the qualities that they can take away to try and find in a gym so it helps them develop as a uh, as a proper fighter the way you you know the way you've turned out um i wanted to ask you because on <laughs> The other day when you when we was when we were speaking, you was on your way to South Africa mm -hmm. from from Scotland, and I can't imagine the the amount of sacrifices, the the birthdays, the anniversaries, the Christmases, the mm -hmm. you know the milestones in in you know in family gatherings that you guys make. What is that like for you, and how does it affect your mindset going into going into a competition? Um, that, that obviously <coughs> puts ultimately puts that food on the table for for you and your family how 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 does it change your mindset how does that affect you i feel like when you have a goal you need to ask you a couple of questions like you find your goal and how bad do you want it what are you willing to sacrifice to get your goal and it goes back to how bad do you want it like say i have a fight that's my goal how bad do I, my real budget how much do you want to sacrifice anything yeah you know i mean so i'm willing to sacrifice birthdays, anniversaries, dinners, parties, because that is not as important to me as my goal, as my drive. So like, I'm willing to sacrifice that. It's a, it's a, you get something you can maybe get FOMO, like the fear of missing out, but it doesn't compare to the feeling of winning a fight or compelling, or, or compare to the feeling of like, like satisfying that accomplishment and getting and completing your goal. Do you know what I mean? So nah, it's, it's People always talk about sacrifice and stuff, and you're, but you're going to have to sacrifice stuff at one point, you know what I mean? So, like, it's just, I never really think about it too much, like, birthdays and parties. It's just part of the game. It's always been part of the game. Obviously, I've been I've been in this since I was kind of, like, 16, so I've had to sacrifice parties and birthdays and holidays and stuff, and it's just something that's in you. But, like, how bad do you want your goal? What, what are you want to sacrifice for it? And as for me, it's always been I'm willing to sacrifice anything for it because I want it that bad. If if I was to say to you, uh, you know, a 16 year old like you just said, mm -hmm. uh, looking to break into into this into this industry into this sport, uh, what would what would what advice would you give them in terms of the pitfalls that you saw coming up? And what you know, what they should be avoiding, and what they could do to uh, to get further along. I feel like success leaves clues. So look for people who have what you want, or are where you want to be, and copy them. So look at world champions, see what they do, how they train, how they eat, how they sleep, how they recover, everything. Copy that if that's where you want to go. Success leaves clues. No, so you're going to make mistakes. It's going to be hard. Like it's, it's never going to be easy. And if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth it. So you're going to struggle. You're going to suffer. But it's all part of the game. It's all part of the process. Like the the suffering and the hard times and the hardship. That's what builds you and makes you stronger. You need it. Go and make mistakes. Be creative. Make mistakes. Don't don't get your ego involved. Where, where like you're so afraid to make mistakes and you're just so rigid that you don't try like you need to be making mistakes so you can learn from them that's probably one of the big things i'd say to make, make mistakes so you're gonna make mistakes like try as long as you try and make mistakes you you learn from your mistakes and then have a vision as well have a vision of where you want to go i don't believe in wander namelessly have a vision of where you want to go and 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 don't like don't settle for anything less than that People will try and tell you to settle and be like, ah, maybe that's a bit a bit far-fetched. You're not going to make that, mate. That's a big goal. Take the fuck off and then let them see. You know what I mean? Be, be, the, be the trailblazer. Be the, be the one. You know what I mean? Everything is impossible until it's done once. So that's what I've always believed. Like, I, I don't... And that's, um, that's it, our viewers. That's it from Mark. You heard it from <laughs> Mark himself, from the horse's mouth. He's just dropped some gems there for you, so you know, you know, you don't make the same sort of mistakes. And you know, it's all about believing in yourself, and uh, and you know, yes, yeah, self belief and vision is probably one of the biggest factors. Like you need to believe in yourself, but that that comes with like the work ethic. The more you work, the more confident you get. But the vision's the biggest part. I feel you need to know where you want to end up, and 
and know where you want to go. And then another one, like I said, success leads close. Look who has what you want. Look who is where you want to be and see what they do. And then copy it. Let's just copy it and you, and you should be all right. I believe in that. Absolutely. Um, we were talking off air. We were talking off air just before we came live where we're from. We're both Nigerians. Nigeria. Uh, and, and, and from the same city as well, Lagos, uh, which, you know, warms my heart a lot. Um, and coming from, coming from where, you know, where we're from, how have you seen the, 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 the fight game and the, the, the fighters coming out of Nigeria now um, from, from all parts of the country, you know, coming into MMA? MMA is now becoming a big thing over there. Um, how, how, how do you find it? And, you being an inspirational person as as you are, how 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 do you see it growing? How do you see it expanding? How, do, you, do you see it exploding in the next few years? What's your take on it? Definitely going to explode. Like I've always kind of seen it coming. Now it's just starting to take fresh. And you've got Kamara when you've got Francis and Ghana, you've got Israel Adesanya. I know Francis is obviously from Cameroon, but it's still yeah. West Africa. Still West, Africa. West Africa is where it's at. Like we don't. As a as a nation, African people kind of dominate sports like the because of their genetics and and the work ethic and what it's like in Africa. And I feel like soon enough they're going to have the resources to have like MMA gyms and boxing gyms in these countries, and they're just going to take over the sport completely, take over combat sports. Not even just because look at Anthony Joshua; he's he, he's part Nigerian, so. There's loads of part Nigerian or Nigerian boxers and that as well. I think it's combat sports. Any type, you can put Nigerians in any sport and they'll thrive. Yeah, you know I mean, and I think it's only it's only like and about time that they kind of get the recognition in combat sports. You now see obviously Israel and Kamara doing really well. And like I said, I feel like it's going to explode. It's only going to get bigger. I'm going to be coming for the ranks. I'm going to be screaming about my head at where I'm from. And obviously, and the values and discipline that my dad instilled in me, being Nigerian. And I feel like there's, there's other guys that are Nigerian in the UFC. There's, there'll be loads of Nigerians coming through. So I feel like it, it's going to be hard not to see Nigerians taking over the sport, especially with the, the, the two that are doing it just now. So and, and especially in the fashion that they're doing it, Israel was absolutely cleaning up. Kamara Usman as well. They're both at the top of the pound pound rankings. You know what I mean? Like, I think yourself as well. Exactly. And myself, I plan to be there. You know what I mean? I plan to try and overtake the guys. So, and I... Once I overtake you guys, I want to then leave a blueprint and leave a plan for the younger generation coming through. You know what I mean? That, that's the, the way it, the evolution is, you know what I mean? I don't plan and just getting to the top and that's it and keeping all my secrets to myself. I want to get to the top and I want to tell everyone how I've done it. And the fact that they have the ability and they have the opportunity to do it themselves. You know what I mean? I would like to go back to Nigeria later on in the future and build some gems and do some giving back because it's only right. There he is, right there. Um, I wanted to ask you, what what would you say to to amateur fighters who are going through the struggle to pay bills and all this other stuff and compete? Because we know the state, even even at the top level, we know the state of fighter pay, and we've been hearing about it. Some fighters are having to, you know, to go on OnlyFans to to pay <laughs> for you know to pay for their to pay for their uh, gym sessions and pay for their camp for their fight camps and stuff like that what would you say to those sort of fighters that you know that, that are coming up and are struggling with uh with with situations like this i said this i said it's, it's hard the, the game is hard man i mind being an amateur i was skint had no money didn't have no job i refused to work because i would just wanted to train all the time i didn't want to have a plan b i just wanted a plan a i don't believe in having plan b's or backup plans because it takes away from plan a but it's going to be hard. Like I said, if it's worth it, it's not going to be easy. If it's worth it, it will not be easy. You're going to struggle, you're going to suffer, but the person you're going to become because of these hardships, it's just meant to be. And you just need to keep driving, keep pushing and, and have faith. Faith's a massive thing that I, kind of, that I told myself and I worked on during the hard times. It's like, just have faith and know that it'll work out. That's one of the biggest things. Because sometimes you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You can't see it. You can't even see the next step you're going to take. You don't know when your money's going to come in. You don't know if you're going to get a fight. You just need to have faith and hope and faith that it's going to work out. And it, and it, it will. I think if you stay optimistic and you stay positive and you stay true to yourself, it will work out. 
but for the amateur fighters and that, just keep getting after it. Keep training. I know, I know it's hard. I've been there. I've been, a, I've been an amateur man. Like, I know. Here's a wee tip. You need to sell your ass, and I don't mean going only fans, but I mean you need to get out there. You need to put, push sponsors. You need to get sponsors. Tell them what you're going to do. Tell them what you you plan to accomplish. Especially local ones. But say to them, listen, I'm a local boy, and local businesses should get behind you. Do you know what I mean? People that want to help you. Good genuine people will help you. I believe that, that's what happened to me. People helped me, and I'll be forever grateful for them. And I still try and get sponsors, but at amateur days when you're not getting paid to fight and you're and if, and if you're training full time and you've not got backing from parents and that and you're skint, but you just you're just chasing the dream and you just got a love and a passion for it, then you need to be getting sponsors just to make it, your life a bit less stressful. Get yourself sponsors, and you just get a sit down with them, explain to them what you plan to accomplish, and they'll and I, I believe they'll help you. Absolutely. If not, uh, give me a give me a message. And I'll shoot some people a message and try and help you because I'm happy to help. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You know, Max just said, you know what I mean? You struck me, shoot me a message. In the, if you're up, up and coming fighter in that world, shoot me a message and he's always happy to help. And this is what we love to hear. You know, this is what we, uh, it, it's, it's, this is what I mean by how inspirational you are, you know, <laughs> uh, your inspiration to all of us. And, um, you know, in your upcoming fights and stuff like that we definitely definitely gonna be rooting for you on this channel and you know down the line hopefully uh we aim to 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 get you back on the to get you back on the show as well yeah definitely man uh, I'm happy to come back on yeah man fantastic um just before we we get you we get you out of here because i know your time is so valuable you just come out of training and and you, you know you're giving us you're giving us the time and i really really appreciate it can we ask uh what can we expect from the great mark um in your next bout that you next come bout. i've not got i've not got anything concrete like i'm i'm waiting to hear from the afc i'd like to get back there in october right. uh, but you know what you can expect fireworks every time i come i come to perform I, I take guys out of the game i knock them out or i finish them somehow i'm a clinical finisher yeah. but let's let's talk more than just my next fight like i'm going to be a world champion i'm saying this on record i will be a world champion i'll be Amen. one of the greatest ah one of the greatest mate because of the work ethic because of the vision because of the stuff that i'm trying to teach and help other people with I, this is what i've learned from people above me and obviously like i'm saying success leaves clues you just need to be looking for clues you know i'm like always driving for more driving for better driving to be the best you possibly can be be the best version of yourself so i will be a world champion i truly believe it I and mean, when i am i'm going to help other people come up 100 percent man uh, do you do before we get you out of here? Do you have anything to, to plug your merchandise? Any anything at all? Anything you wanna you wanna, just, you wanna put out there? Just uh, all my sponsors, everyone that sponsors me and, and that's backed me in my, my my full career. I really appreciate you, and it means a lot. And obviously, I that's really I want to give them a shout out. Thank you very much, man. I'd like to thank you so much, Mark, uh, for your time. We know how valuable your time is and um so grateful that you you know you're able to to share that to share that with us today we can't wait for whatever you got coming next we're going to be tuning in and even if it's one two three people from you know from our viewers that you know that got to to know you today and learn something from you today from you know some of the things that you said um uh, it's it's a win for us and that's that's basically what we're trying to get out there Put, put you know put the spotlight on you and you know learn about your story and draw inspiration from your story as well and um you know hopefully like i said uh down the line we, we we're able to bring you back on the channel and um you know big things is going to be happening for mark and we're going to be right there with you on the journey man so thank you yeah, very man. very much for uh for joining us today man you you've been fantastic and uh you you're a very very good spot Listen, thank you for having me, mate. I really appreciate you getting me on and obviously getting to tell my side of the story and stuff, but I appreciate that. Thank you very much, sir. And, um, yeah, you've been on the Fight Week show, and uh, on to the next video. We out. Hey, guys, this is John Anik from the UFC. You're watching the Fight Week show. Please subscribe. Not now, but right now. Subscribe to the Fight Week show. We'll see you guys on the road soon.